Hello everyone. This is Professor Ben Tihanke and I'd like to give you a brief overview of what action research is all about, especially in relation to your roles as Lasallian business leaders. The textbook is quite comprehensive, so I would encourage you to read it in great detail. However, I hope this general overview will give you an idea. To really understand the importance of action research and why we're making sure all our MBA students understand action research, we need to start with a big picture. When you join the La Salle University, you became part of the aspirations of the institution. As you know, in a management uh, organization, the aspirations of an institution are captured in its vision mission. The La Salle University wants to focus on you as learners and to make sure that you understand research. Your learning is the most important thing to us and your ability to discover new knowledge through research is extremely important as well. However, since we are a Catholic university, our approach to learning and research is guided by our faith-based mission. So for us, research is not simply an objective activity, but rather it is guided by important values underlying Catholic faith, such as human dignity, community, concern for the poor, and so on. And, especially during these times, the university is very much focused on sustainability, that is, ensuring that future generations will benefit from living on Earth. And of course, given the situation of the Philippines, one of our central interests is to make sure that the poor and marginalized can be uplifted. Everything the university does is guided by its three core values of faith, zeal for service, and communion and mission. Let's understand these three values more deeply. As already mentioned, De La Salle University is a Catholic university. Therefore, it is committed to traditional Catholic values, such as the promotion of human dignity and social justice. Therefore, in pursuit of this classical Catholic values, the university aspires to build a community of morally upright scholars who will help students to harmonize the values of human development and social transformation with their life and contemporary knowledge. Through this, the university hopes to continue to propagate new knowledge that will help in the improvement of the human condition and the improvement of societies in general. Service is the second Lasallian value. The university is dedicated to being a resource not only for the church but for the whole country. It is here to be socially responsible and help the Philippines achieve the, the status it deserves in the community of nations by promoting justice, peace, stability, and progress. Finally, the third Lasallian core value is communion. Through communion, we believe that relationships among people in cooperation for the common good is extremely important. In fact, the university believes that the quality of life of people in Philippine society can only improve if we improve the relations of all. We therefore encourage all of our students to be community builders. Especially in today's political milieu, this is a very important trait of Lasallians, to become builders of bridges and not of walls. So those are the three classical values of De La Salle University, faith, service, and communion. And it's, they're easy to remember as F, S, C, which happen also to be the letters that follow 
the name of every Lasallian brother. The FSC for Lasallian brothers stand for Brothers of the Christian Schools, or in Latin, Fratres Scolarum Christianarum. Now that you understand the big picture of the university, you will find it much easier to understand how the management and organization department fits in. The department, which is called MOD for short, is in charge of the MBA program. So where does the MOD want to go? Of course, it is inspired by the Salian values, which we discussed earlier, and especially the Catholic social teachings which form the core beliefs of all Catholic institutions. But in particular, MOD uses these beliefs to make sure that it gives a management education that is values-based and grounded in research. The goal of such a program is of course to promote the development of human beings and the propagation of sustainable value-adding organizations, especially in light of the ASEAN integration. Many people think that business is principally meant for profit. However, as can be seen in the vision of MOD, we want to go much way beyond that. How does MOD work towards achieving its vision? It does this through the kind of teaching it offers to its students. For example, the mission of the department states very clearly that the kind of graduates we want to produce will of course be technically competent, but all schools aim for competence. Beyond competence, we want business students who will be able to think carefully about their actions, their decisions, and especially the impact of these on other people and the community. We want them to be particularly sensitive to the human condition and the needs of human beings. And as a very strong focus, we want them to be change agents so that they can improve society as a whole and in particular uplift the conditions of the poor. The focus on change agents gives you a clue why action research is a central component of our MBA program. If you graduate as a business leader but only accept the status quo and only focus on your personal gain and not make any difference in the community around you, that would not be a Lasallian business education. What would make you a Lasallian business leader is that you have all of these, but you use it to promote positive change in service of society. To help students become positive social change agents, the university promotes a particular way of thinking, which it calls the Lasallian Reflection Framework. This framework will be very helpful when you try to learn action research. Let's go through it. The reflection framework is actually a cycle. It begins with seeing and experiencing, or in Filipino, masid danas. So a student or a business leader has to be very alert and vigilant as to what is happening around him or her. For example, a manager must know what is happening not only to the financials of the business, but also what is happening to his or her employees. And this is only possible if he or she is very alert in looking at what is the situation in the market as well as within the organization. Such observations and experiences are then converted to analysis and reflection by the manager. In Filipino, we call this suri nilay. This kind of analysis is intended to understand what is being seen or experienced. This is not a passive act. 
Rather, it is a very critical dissection of the reality that one is seeing or experiencing. Especially important in this part is the understanding of the causes of why we are experiencing the situation that we are confronting. For example, if a manager is seeing a very high turnover of employees, this is not something that is simply to be accepted. It must be analyzed and reflected upon. What could it be that employees are looking for? What could it be that the organization is not providing? Only by understanding these causal factors can the manager then go into action with commitment or in Filipino, taya kilos. Notice that the cycle of reflection and action is a continuing process. But this process is not yet complete. The Lasallian is not just a robot who is looking analytically at the world around him. He is also guided by feelings. Being a human being, he tries to reflect on how he feels about the situation that he sees, about his analysis, and about his actions. At the same time that he is conscious about his own feelings, he is ever conscious about the feelings of others. You will note therefore that feeling and empathy is the connecting tissue that guides the Lasallian to make sure that what he sees and experiences is connected in a humanistic way to how he analyzes and reflects and ultimately connected to how he commits to action. Now let's tackle the important question, what is action research? As we go through the answers to this question, try to link it with what we learned about the LaSalle Reflection Framework. First of all, action research is research in action rather than research about action. In traditional research, the researcher looks at other people doing things and asks questions about those people. Whereas in action research, the researcher is himself doing things and he is not separate from the action. Therefore, the action research involves scientific approach to address important social and organizational issues. It is a problem-solving approach. However, the approach is quite unique in that the action researcher is working with others so that they can address these issues directly and together. In traditional research, the researcher is not interested in actually solving the problem. Rather, he or she is interested in how others are solving that problem. Action research, and this is where the similarity with the Lasallian Reflection Framework becomes very clear, proceeds through a cycle. And the four steps are implemented by the action research in a very mindful and deliberate way. And what are these steps? Planning, taking action, evaluating the action, and further leading to more planning and action. Not only is action research cyclical, it is actually a continuous process, cycling on and on until the issue is resolved. Second, action research is always working with others in a way that involves them so that they are not merely subjects of the research. So the action researcher, when working with a system, which might be a business or a community organization or any social setting, involves those who are being studied so that they participate in the process that we outlined above. So when we do action research, it's very important to check how the people are participating so that they have an input in how the research is being done, what action is being done, and what questions are being asked. In traditional research, all of these decisions are made only by the researcher. 
The subjects, whether they are being observed or answering questionnaires, normally have no say in any of those things. In action research, research is being done at the same time as the action. In traditional research, for example, in market research, the researcher will first do the market research and then do the marketing program. In action research, it is very possible that the market research is being done at the same time as the marketing itself. By doing it simultaneously, the, the action researcher can improve the effectiveness of the marketing while at the same time building a body of scientific marketing. And lastly, action research is not just a sequence of events, as we outlined here. It is also an approach to problem solving. The most important thing about action research is that it makes a direct impact on a situation by addressing the issue together with others and learning at the same time. So, if we dissect action research further, we will identify four key elements. The first element is that the action researcher must be very knowledgeable of the situation that he or she is dealing with, the so-called context, so that when he identifies an issue to address, this issue will be guided by the needs of the organization as well as the literature or the research that has been done on that issue. For example, if the action researcher chooses an issue regarding technology, such issue must be related to the context of the organization, which might be co competition or regulation or logistics. And then the action researcher must look into the theory and past research that is related to technology and all those business aspects that I mentioned. Secondly, an important element of action research is gaining the trust of the people who the action researcher must work with. Because only by collaborating in close relationship with the people involved with the issue can action research be implemented in a meaningful way. After all, the measure of effectiveness of action research is whether positive change is effected. And a cardinal principle is that positive change can only be effected if those who are involved are actively engaged in the project. Third, action research involves action and reflection because if only action is taking place without reflection, learning does not happen. Secondly, the chances that mistakes will happen in the implementation of action will increase several fold without reflection. The absence of reflection has been one of the major reasons why business scandals have grown in increasing frequency in the last couple of decades. Managers and even senior executives has, have been doing action without reflection, which sometimes lead to a lot of business disasters, affecting not only the business and its employees, but even the community at large. And finally, a fourth element of good action research is that the action researcher is able to contribute to knowledge about organization and theory. Remember that as master's students, you are not studying just to imbibe knowledge. You are also studying to contribute to knowledge. The action research paper that you will complete for your MBA will be submitted to the library and will be referred to by future action researchers and others who are interested in addressing issues similar to the one that you addressed. The basic sequence of activities in action research is contained in what is called the action research cycle. As we go through the cycle, I will share with you questions that you should tackle for each step of the cycle. 
Let's begin with a context and purpose. At this stage, you want to ask yourself the following questions. What is your initial understanding of the situation's background? Who are involved? What are their goals? How did the situation come to be? What are your roles, goals, needs, and concerns? For example, if I were a manager looking at the situation of high turnover in the organization, I would be asking myself the following questions. What is my initial understanding of why there is high turnover? Do I suspect that it's because of lack of competitive pay? Do I think it's because of the difficult hours involved in the work? This is part of my initial understanding. Of course, the employees who are leaving are involved, but also the managers to whom these employees report. I want to know what are the goals of both the employees who are involved in a turnover as well as the supervisors who supervise them. Next, I would like to know how did the high turnover come to be? Was it always that way? Or is it an increasing trend? Or perhaps a reverse? Perhaps the, high, the turnover was even higher before. Then I would like to know what would be my role relative to the high turnover situation? Am I affected somehow? If so, what is my goal relative to the situation? Do I, uh, do I want to improve it? If so, why do I need to improve it? What is my direct concern? Is it because it affects the productivity of my work unit? Is it because I am concerned about the employees who are leaving? Is it because I feel that the investment of training and recruitment made on the employees become a waste? Or that, in effect, by moving to the competitors, we are actually subsidizing the competition? All of these questions are part of context and purpose. And then we proceed to the next phase of the action research cycle, which is called constructing. Here we ask questions such as, what do you and the people involved agree is the issue and the causes? For example, I may initially have thought that the issue is high turnover. But once I talk to the people who are involved, they might help me refine what the issue is. For example, they might identify the issue as more of growth or the lack of growth based on what the employees say. So if that becomes a new issue, then the original issue of high turnover is simply a symptom. And it is really an, a matter of understanding why there is a lack of growth. Next, we go into planning action. Given that we have an initial construction that there is high turnover and this is directly caused by a lack of growth for employees, what do we now plan to do about it? How do we address the matter of growth and what would we like to achieve? For example, would we like to improve the career pathing of employees? Would we like to allow lateral transfers and job rotations? Would we like to give more mentoring so that they can feel that they are actually on track to something uh, in the future that can help them become better at what they do, as well as achieve financial goals, etc.? The action researcher must agree on this plan together with those who are involved. And then, of course, they must implement. At this stage, the action researcher takes very careful notes of what is actually implemented, because this becomes the basis for the next step, which is evaluation. Here, the action researcher and his or her team asks the question, 
what results were gained relative to our original goal. If you remember, our goal was to provide for more growth and therefore reduce turnover. Was this achieved? Importantly, we also ask, what did the action researchers achieve for themselves? Did they become better problem solvers? Did the action researcher improve his or her relationships with those who were involved in the project? And ultimately, did the organization benefit from the action? All of these questions must be answered at this stage. As we have learned, action research proceeds through a cycle involving constructing the issue and its causes, by involving others, planning the action together, doing the action, and looking at what results were achieved. Of course, because of the complexity of organizational life, a single cycle of action research will usually not fully address an issue, which is why action research is usually not only cyclical but iterative, that is, it involves several cycles. So this will only be cycle one. Then it proceeds to cycle two. Because after the evaluation, a new construction begins. In the second construction, the action research team may discover that they made a mistake in the initial construction. Or perhaps they failed to identify the real cause of the issue or missed out on one of the causes. Therefore, in their new construction, they will include these learnings so that the plan will be better than the first cycle. They will then implement this action and once again evaluate. Depending on this evaluation, they may choose to have a third construction. So the important thing to notice here is that with every cycle, the action research team is gaining in its knowledge and experience of dealing with this issue. Hopefully, through this process, they are also developing a theory that can be contributed to the science of addressing similar issues in the future. As we explained, action research involves following four cycles in an iterative manner involving the people involved in an issue. However, action research does not stop here. As already previously mentioned, action research involves a lot of reflection. And reflection in action research is referred to as meta-reflection. Meta means about. Therefore, the reflection of the action researcher is about how the action research was done. In particular, there are three aspects of meta reflection symbolized by the three legs of this stool. So once a cycle of action research has been completed, and even during the period that these action steps are being completed, the action research researcher is involved in doing the following. First is what we call content reflection. The action researcher asks himself, am I dealing with and understanding the right issues, the right concerns. Second, the action research is asking himself, am I approaching this the right way? And finally, the action researcher does what is called a premise reflection and asks himself, are my reasons for addressing this issue valid and ethical? Let us go deeper into this in the next slide. In meta-learning, we already mentioned that we have three forms of reflection, content, process, and premise. Let's look more deeply into these three forms of reflection. In content reflection, we are thinking of whether the issue and what is happening is appropriate. We could ask questions like the following. Did I focus on the right issues? Did I achieve better understanding of what is actually happening and why it is happening? 
What is clearer to me now, having done this action research? What did I miss? What is still confusing? All of these questions can help me reflect on the content of the action research and perhaps help me focus on better content in the future. Next is process reflection. This is where I, where I think about the strategies I used and the procedures of how I got things done. Questions like the following can help me in process reflection. Did I go about the action research the right way? Did I involve the right people? In the right sequence? Using the right approach? How could I have done better? For example, suppose I involved A and then only later on involved B. Perhaps, in my reflection, I realized that I should have involved A and B at the same time. And in fact, I should also have involved C. This is an example of a process reflection. Secondly, perhaps I talked to A and B mainly by email. One process reflection could be, I could have done it face to face or even informally over coffee and donuts. The third reflection is called premise reflection. This is where we look at the underlying assumptions and points of view that I had as I was undergoing the action research. The following questions can help me. Which of my beliefs, whether it was my values, assumptions, perspectives, or principles, were affirmed or strengthened after the action research? Why do I think so? On the other hand, which of these beliefs were challenged and need to be revised? And why do I think so? For example, when I implemented my actual research, perhaps I was a very strong believer in initiative and teamwork. However, perhaps after the actual research, I realized that teamwork is not always the best approach. Perhaps I found out that in some cases, it is justified to work alone on certain aspects of the issue. These are examples of premise reflections. Another important aspect of premise reflection is ethics. For example, in pursuing my action research, I might have put a lot of value on gaining recognition for my initiative. But later on, after doing the action research, I realize that I have deepened my relationships with my fellow action researchers and realize that actually improving relationships is just as important to me as gaining recognition for my initiative. So in action researcher, in action research rather, the three forms of reflection make sure that completing the action research not only addresses the issue but helps me to become a better person through focusing on content reflecting on how I do it, and looking at my values and beliefs as a human being. Now that you have a general idea of what action research is, at some point in this course, you will be asked to think about what kind of action research you want to do. So the following ideas can help you think about your own action research. You can ask yourself, what are you experiencing in your organization? that is causing you to ask yourself, can I do something about this? Is this something I should accept or something I should change? What are your observations? What are you hearing? What are you seeing? What are you feeling? Second, is there something that puzzling you? Or is something you find unusual or something that needs to be stopped? And is this something you want to address? This is usually a good clue to a possible action research project. Once you choose the issue that you want to address, then you want to ask yourself, how do you want to proceed? How would you like to plan your steps to address this issue? And what kinds of inquiry and questions will you raise? And what kinds of opportunities will you pursue so that you can generate insights from addressing this issue? 
And finally, and very importantly, who will you work with? Will they agree with you that this is an issue? If so, how prepared are you to listen to them and involve them? Will it also be important to them? Or mainly, is it just important to you? Remember, for effective action research, you must be prepared to adapt to how others see the situation. Only then can you really promote meaningful positive change. So good luck in your action research project search.